Let's look at an environment diagram that includes lists and a non-local assignment statement. Here it is. Try to draw it yourself, and then I'll go through it. So first we define the OSCE function, which has a global parent. Then we call it here on the abs function, which is built in. Now, when we call OSCE, we introduce a new frame, F1, which is the OSCE frame where the formal parameter bear is bound to the function abs, which is a built-in function. We can write it out like this. Once OSCE is called, it defines a function called cal and returns cal2. Okay, so defining cal just means introducing a new function value, which is cal, its formal parameter is Burke, its parent is the frame in which it was defined, which is the current frame f1. Now, what we return is not the cal function, but the result of calling cal on the number 2. So we have to introduce a new frame that calls cal on the number 2. Its parent is f1, because we always call a function and copy its parent over into the frame created when we called that function. Okay. What are its formal parameters? Well, just Burke. And what is Burke bound to? Well, the argument that we passed in, the number 2. Now we execute the body of that cal function, which says there's a non-local bear. It then checks if bear Burke is equal to 0. Well, what's bear? We look here. There's no bear. We look at its parent. There's bear. It's the abs function. What's the absolute value of 2? It's 2, which is not 0. So we skip this. Now remember how if statements work. If there's no else, then we have a false condition. We skip this line, but we still have to continue executing everything else in the body of the function. So the next line says bear equals lambda li colon Burke minus Lee. We evaluate the right-hand side first, which creates a new function, a lambda function. What's its formal parameter? It's Lee. What's its parent? Its parent is the current frame when it was created, the F2 frame. So that's why we have a lambda function here with a parent of F2. Now, we bind it to bear. Bear was declared non-local. So by binding it to bear, we're changing the binding of whatever bear appears in the first frame of the current environment in which bear was already bound to something else. So we look in F1. Is there a bear? Oh, there certainly is. So that's the bear we're changing in this assignment statement. This bear is now bound to the lambda function, and that replaces the binding that was there before. So the next time we call bear, we're going to be calling this lambda function instead of absolute value. Now we execute this return statement, which means evaluating this expression. This will create a list. The first element of the list will be 2, the current value for Burke. The next element will be whatever's the result of calling cal on Burke, a recursive call to cal, passing in 2 as an argument. So Burke is 2, we evaluate that first, then we can call cal on 2, and that introduces a new frame. This frame is a cal frame, has the same parent as before, actually has the same argument as before. Do you think it's just going to do the same thing? Well, actually it won't, because we made a change to how this works when we made non-local assignment back here. So let's just march through the, all the lines again. We have this line that says, if bear Burke equals 0, what's bear? Now it's the lambda function. And so right here, we're calling lambda on Burke, which is 2. Lambda has parent f2. That's what it said right here. It has formal parameter Li, which is bound to 2, the argument. And what does it do? It returns Burke minus Li. So Li is 2. What's Burke? 
Well, we look in its parent f2, here is is, and we find Burke is bound to 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 is equal to 0. And so what we return from this second call to Cal is Burke plus 1 comma Burke minus 1. Using this value of Burke here, we create a list with 3 and 1 in it. This is called a box and pointer diagram, and it diagrams the contents of a list. So this list value is written with indices, the word list, and different segments of the box that contain the different values. Now for primitive values like numbers, we just write them in the box. But remember, the reason we were doing this was so that we could create a list that contained two and then this return value. And so here's a box and pointer diagram for that list, which has a list within it. It's two, and then the list three one is its second element. And this is the return value of cal, which by the way is the return value of oski. And now we're finished. By the way, this return value, if printed out, would look like this. A list containing two and the list three comma one.